Well, friends, DrexFest 2020 has officially wrapped. Uh, we've done all the events, we've had all the musicians, we've paid out most of the receipts and everything, and now the question is, uh, how does it look in retrospect? Drex here from DrexFactor.com, bringing you poise spinning and flow arts to benefit your body and brain, and today I am wrapping up my series about how to run an online flow event. Before we dive in, I just want to give a quick shout out to the friends of the channel. Big thanks to Dark Monk, Flow Toys, Pyroterra Light Toys, LMF Props, Spinballs, and Ultrapoi for helping to make the videos on this channel possible. You can learn more about all these amazing companies and the work that they're doing to support flow artists like yourself by checking out the links that I've got down in the description of this video. So, DrexFest 2020 was this past weekend, and uh, not only did it come together, but it came together beautifully. Uh, there was definitely a moment on Sunday during Party Nails' set when I was flowing out and enjoying her music and just having a moment where I'm just like, you know, this was all I really wanted in the world and it was pretty good. And overall too, like the flow of the event was really good. We've been getting really, really positive feedback on it. And also too, like I feel as though the entire production staff did an amazing job of kind of figuring out how exactly we could play to the platform and uh, make it as good an experience as possible for our attendees. In addition, from what I can tell, this was also a positive experience for our sponsors. Um, I know that some of the promo codes that we were pushing during the event and everything have led to a whole bunch of sales for some of them as well, so yay. And you know, also on a personal level, there's something about the event that makes me really happy knowing that, you know, people got to learn some really incredible things and get exposed to teachers they may never have otherwise. Um, and I've definitely been getting a lot of uh, posts on Instagram that I've been seeing uh, about people that are talking about specific, both musicians and instructors that they were exposed to during the event that like really, really had a deep impact on them, which makes me really happy because if, if I did nothing else good this weekend, just getting some of those people more fans, I'm gonna say is enough. So overall, I'm gonna say I'm happy with how the event went, but I'd also like to give you all just a little bit more detail on the individual things that went down in the course of it. If there was one thing that was the bane of our existence, it was audio. Um, as much as I adore Crowdcast as a platform, it was really, really difficult to get a clean audio feed going through it. Uh, pretty much all of the music we had for the first day, with the exception of uh, our DJ Danny Baltimore at the end of the day and everything, um, the audio was definitely pretty garbled. A lot of it was either like coming through um, PC speakers or mics or what have you, um, or it was just getting really, really badly clipped and compressed uh, going through Crowdcast. So, um, I, regrettably, most of the people that were on the first day of the event probably did not have a great experience of the audio there, and for that I am sorry. But the amazing production staff came back the second day and they managed to fix our gremlins, which as I understand it, took quite a bit of effort, but it is something that I really appreciate. And I think it's also fair to say that one of the other limitations we found with Crowdcast as a platform is that any pre-existing media is kind of uh, a difficult thing to push through it. And of course, I discovered how easy it is to have things pop up that interrupt the signal between OBS and Crowdcast, you know, whether it was getting a phone call coming in through my laptop and everything, or it was me switching into studio mode for a second to try and check some of the videos that I had in the queue and everything on OBS. Um, I found a couple times that I lost a connection and unfortunately there's not an easy way to get that back because essentially you have to um, restart the uh, screen server and uh, stream key and everything and pull that into OBS and start streaming all over again and everything. And there's really no good way to do that without ending the session and that interrupts the experience for the audience. Now all that said, there were some things that worked incredibly well, especially for the panel discussions, the way the the ask a question function works on Crowdcast was really stunningly effective and I imagine that a lot of people going through and watching the replay are going to skip directly to a lot of the questions that were answered in them. In addition, the ability to pull people on screen and everything during the musical acts was really fun. Um, there was definitely a lot of times over the course of the weekend where we had people 
who were coming in and flowing with us from all over the world. Um, there were points at which people piped in their kids playing with different tools and everything. And we discovered a feature that we didn't even know that Crowdcast had, namely that you can take 15 second snippets of sessions, even if they are paid sessions, and post them to social media and everything so that you can preview them for other people, which I think is really cool. And I was really grateful that the entire time the production staff were talking to each other and supporting each other behind the scenes. Uh, helping to field tech-related questions, doing handoffs when somebody ran into internet connectivity issues, or they didn't know how to address a particular problem or what have you. Um, all of these things seemed really, really transparent to me from the user side and everything. So I don't think there's much more that you can ask of a production staff than that. The panel discussions were really insightful. Um, I'm feel really, really grateful that I was able to bring together the groups of people that I was able to get for this particular weekend and everything. Um, in particular, the Flow Arts in the Era of Black Lives Matter uh, panel, I think, was just a really, really stunningly effective um, meeting of the minds as well as meeting for the audience. There were definitely a lot of people that came away from that with new information that they didn't have before. And of course, the obvious question, how did attendance go? How were ticket sales? Well, um, I will admit that in the week leading up to the event, I was panicking a little. Um, we did not break 100 tickets until the day before the event. And then we managed to uh, accumulate a third of our tickets in the 12 hours before the event started. Basically, at five o'clock Eastern time on Friday, all of the sudden the ticket sales started coming in out of nowhere and I was flabbergasted and very grateful. And there were some really cool things that popped up that I really didn't expect. One of the biggest being that um, in our kind of unstructured Zoom calls that we had for dinner in between uh, scheduled blocks and everything, there were some folks that were attending that requested that we have branded merch. This literally did not cross my mind at all in the run-up to the festival. So Sunday night, I very hurriedly put together a uh, Teespring storefront for us, as well as um, reaching out to one of our sponsors, uh, Matrix Fire Safety, and got them to do a specially branded uh, Matrix Fire Safety blanket just for attendees to the festival, which you can also take advantage of if you want to as well. If you use the code DREXFEST at Matrix Fire Safety, you can get your own fire safety blanket that has the Drex Fest logo on it. Awesome. And of course, one of those super important parts of this equation is that we are collecting feedback from our attendees. Uh, emails have been sent out both to the email addresses that registered for the event, as well as reminders sent out on the Facebook page, as well as uh, on my Instagram and everything, asking people to fill it out. And overall, the feedback has been incredibly positive. The things that we've been asking about have basically been asking people what their experience is, if they would recommend the uh, event to a friend, uh, if they would recommend any of the panel discussions to friends, uh, what were some of the most effective things that we did, uh, what were some things that we could have done better, and what changes would people like to see us make if we're going to run another event like this in the future, as well as a whole bunch of demographic information to tell us more about the attendees of the event. Which does bring up the obvious question, of course, um, is there going to be another one? People were overwhelmingly asking for this by the end of this event. And uh, the short answer I will give you is that I am still in the process of decompressing from this event. Uh, I'm very, very happy with how this event went. But um, it was also one of those things that in putting together this event, I definitely put it together in such a way that I was expecting to never ever get the opportunity again. This was my moonshot. And I have a difficult time now wrapping my head around if I was going to do it again, like, how would I do it bigger and better and everything? How would how would I ever uh, approach that lineup? How, how would I be able to, like, make sure that it honored the memory of this event and 
pushed it forward into the future and everything. Right now, I don't have answers to those questions, and um, I am going to think about them, but I, I think that it would be difficult for me to sign up to do this again if I couldn't come up with answers to those questions. If for no other reason than it was such a special experience for me and everybody else that it almost feels like it would do a disservice to people to give them something that I knew wasn't as good. Really, the one and only thing that has popped up after the event is realizing that um, I dramatically under budgeted for the time of our production engineers. Um, I thought that it would be a relatively straightforward project for them to do the tech rehearsals with the participants and be there to run tech during the actual event itself. And, you know, partially because of problems with the audio and partially also just because sometimes you discover things in the course of doing those tech rehearsals that need to be fixed and everything, this wound up being a bigger time commitment than I thought it was going to be. And, you know, that's part of the learning process of running an event such as this. Uh, you learn the unknown unknowns, as they say. There was so much energy and anxiety and excitement and everything that were funneled into this event that now it kind kind of feels like I've been in Oz for a little while and now I'm coming back to Kansas. But hey, if you have any questions about the event, how I ran it, how it turned out and everything, please feel free to ask in the comments and I will do my best to answer those questions. So before I draw this series to a close, I do just want to take another moment to thank all of the wonderful people that were involved in it. Uh, starting off with our instructors, thank you so much for signing on to do this. This. Uh, Joe Faid, Taylor Tries, Nick Woolsey, uh, Iman Moveso, T, and um, Thai Foods, and of course Liz Knights. And of, of course to our musical guests. Uh, thank you to Flower Bomb and to Danny Baltimore. Thank you as well to Party Nails. Your set was amazing. And to Mr. Jennings, not only for being a part of this, but also for all of the musical support you've lent my channel over the years. Thank you as well to the amazing production staff. Uh, the Fantastic Four, our production engineers. Thank you to uh, Vanessa and Hope and John Gruber and Richard for all of your hard work. Um, each of you brought a really necessary piece to the puzzle and something that in retrospect I don't know how we would have accomplished the event without and I really appreciate all four of you for it. Also big thanks to my production manager as well as the facilitator of the uh, flow arts in the era of Black Lives Matter uh, panel. Thank you so much to Nexus. Um, you seriously were the great unsung hero of this event. Um, you put together so many pieces and talked me off the ledge so many times. And of course, thank you, 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 thank you to our amazing sponsors because um, I think I probably would have canceled the event were it not for all of you uh, supporting the event at a very, very timely moment. Because again, I didn't know when the ticket sales would start coming in and I was getting really scared that last week. So um, thank you so much to Flow Toys, Sean and Prisna for your amazing support, not only for the event, but also this channel in general. Thank you to Fun in Motion Toys, uh, Kevin and crew, you, you all I, I, once again have just been amazing for years and I love all of the new toys that y'all are putting out. Uh, thank you as well to Matrix Fire Safety, not only for sponsoring the event, but for making the merch happen on such a fast turnaround. I reached out to, uh, I reached out to Adam May like first thing Monday morning and he had it all ready to go by noon. It was fantastic. Um, and thank you, of course, to Ultra Poi for your amazing support both for the channel as well as for the event. Thank you one and all. And thank all of you out there for watching, especially if you did attend the event. Um, have you set up your own events? Uh, what were some of your key takeaways? What are some things that you thought were interesting about my approach? Please let me know down in the comments. Be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe to help make sure other people find these videos. So if they wanna run their own events, they have a reference guide on how to do it. And of course, a huge thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. They make this video and all the videos on this channel possible. Um, if you like the work that I do here and you'd like to support it, 
uh, please consider going to sign up at patreon.com slash drexfactorpoi. You can get early access to all of my content, as well as a say in what topics I tackle in the future, uh, as well as some behind the scenes stuff that gets posted every once in a while too. Thank you in advance. Amazing. So with that, I draw this series to a close. I hope it has been helpful and informative. It definitely has been helpful for me to kind of pick through my thoughts and everything. So um, yeah, good luck out there with your own events and I will see you out in that world. Peace.